So one of the things I want to make sure you hear from me, if you're finding this video, is that we need you to stay. The world will never be better without you. Hello and welcome to The Middle. I'm Gaina Lynn Condi, your host. I'm grateful to have a few minutes, just you and I, to talk about something really important, sensitive to my heart, uh, a little bit about me. If you've caught the intro video, you know a little bit about me, but maybe it's through the next few episodes that you'll get a sense of my story and where I come from. One big piece of my story and one of my big whys in doing this video series, writing, speaking, and, and other media outlets that I share messages on is to talk about the complicated issues surrounding suicide, depression, and anxiety. Specifically today, I felt on my heart to share thoughts around battling in the middle after you have already lost someone to suicide. There's, there's a new awarenesses that happen, but as you're in the middle of whether it's depression or anxiety, I've come to understand that everyone on the planet is somewhat in the middle of the story. And what I mean by that is you either deal with depression, anxiety, specifically within your own soul and heart, you love someone that does, or like our family, you've already lost someone to suicide. Six years ago, we lost my 40-year-old sister to suicide. And I'm the oldest, and she was more my baby than she was my baby sister, if you know what I mean. I had taken care of her. We had gone through so much together. Our parents had been divorced, and we were just always there for each other. And losing her was a unique grief. And as I've navigated the last six years being in the middle of that unique grief, the grief of suicide, I've learned some really important lessons. And her death really has fueled this mission and this work that I do. When I share on social media or in a video series like The Middle, it really is with the understanding that all of us are in the middle of struggling with this. Like I said, you're either in the middle yourself or you love someone that is. And that's all of us. That's literally every person on the planet. Either know someone that is struggling with depression, anxiety, or suicidal ideation, or they themselves are or you've already lost someone. And that's really an awareness that we can come together and have these conversations. They're not easy, they're not simple, there's no easy quick answers. But one of the things that was on my heart today that I wanted to share is that if you find yourself in the middle to where depression and anxiety has started to feel like too many thoughts around suicide, I hope you're tuning in and I hope something that I share today will help you go forward. I hope that if you're in the middle, like my sister Meg, and you're tired and you're feeling like the world would be better without you, that something I say in the next few minutes changes your mind. That's my prayer. That's my hope. So one of the things I want to make sure you hear from me, if you're finding this video is that we need you to stay. The world will never be better without you. And I know that for my sister Meg, she got tired and she was so aware of her flaws, of her struggles, of her addictions, her learning disabilities, the things she had battled for so long, that the depression and anxiety had kind of walled her off to the love and support that was around her. And she started to believe the lie. And the lie was that we would be better without her. She had an amazing therapist. She had religious leaders that supported her. She had community. She had family. She had friends. And once she was your friend, she was your friend for life. I love how Meg loved. And she loved me. And because we had journeyed through life together, we were only 18 months apart in age. I was the big sister but she really was the one that knew me and had witnessed my life. And she was my biggest cheerleader. And yes, I knew what she struggled with. I knew the starts and stops she had had. I knew that she would do really well for a while and then she'd fall into what I call the pit. And when she would fall in that pit, it was never quite clear what it was going to take to get her out. 
And oftentimes I was the one that would throw that like lifeline down to her and help her out of the pit. Well, what that did to me, and if you're watching this and you're a family member of someone that struggles or a friend or a spouse or a child, you start to believe that when you love someone that struggles and you help them through those dark times, that you're in charge of saving them. And one of the lessons I had to learn in the middle of the grief after her death was that there is only one savior and I am not him. I could influence her and love her and support her, but I couldn't save her. So I know that if Meg was sitting with me right now on this amazing yellow couch, she would say stay. She would absolutely say stay. There's some research out there that uh, the percentage of people that jump off the Golden Gate Bridge that live is very small. So I am not recommending that anyone does that. But for that percentage of people that do survive jumping, 90% of them witness that their life is joyful and happy in ways they never could have imagined right before they jumped. And that they often reported that the minute they jumped, they knew they had made a mistake. And I know through really personal experiences after Meg's death that she felt the same. This life is hard, but we need you. We need you to stay. We're not better without any one of our brothers and sisters on the planet. We are all connected. And so when one leaves, it's a loss for all of us. The day my sister's headstone was placed was the day they found Robin Williams. And I feel like in that moment, the world kind of collectively understood the unique grief around suicide. Suicide, being in the middle of that grief, is a what-if grief. Those left behind question, what could I have done? What more could I have done to help? I lost another sister when I was 10, and she was nearly two years old. Both my sisters are now buried next to each other in a cemetery in California. And it was heartbreaking to lose Bonnie. But it was a different kind of grief to navigate after Meg. Because the what-if questions never stopped. We kept wondering what more we could have done. So if you're watching this, and you're listening to this with a struggle in your heart and you're tired, I hope you understand that we need you to stay. You're developing like mental, emotional, and spiritual muscles as you keep battling through and climbing out of that pit. And I know you're tired. I don't want to oversimplify this. The last thought I want to share with you is what I've really come to understand about my own struggles with mental health, especially after Meg. I had to get okay with not being okay. I had to get okay with not being perfect after Meg died. And in that wrestle, I've come to learn a principle that I call the plan B. And I hope that it helps one of you out there. I've done about a thousand speaking events all over the world the last six years. And I've met thousands and thousands of people on social media and in person at these events. And what I've come to know is that when we get tired, the first thing to go is hope. And hope for me used to be a feeling, kind of like, I'm not feeling hope today, as if it's this fleeting feeling that you can't really capture. But after my sister died, I have a really good friend that's a therapist, and she's in the trenches with people that are battling suicidal ideation, depression, anxiety every day. And she taught me an amazing thing that I want to share with you, and that is this. Hope is not a feeling. Hope is a plan B. Isn't that amazing to consider? That means plan A didn't work. She often will have clients come to her that have tried other therapists, have tried medication, have tried diets and exercise and all these tools to help them deal with their anxiety, their depression, or whatever else they're facing. And they come to her discouraged and they're saying, I've tried everything. And she will say to them, you haven't tried me. So maybe you're not on plan B, maybe you're on plan D, maybe you're on plan F and you're like yelling at the screen right now, like gain in, you don't understand. I'm beyond tired. I'm beyond hope. Hope left a long time ago. I'm going to invite you to consider that this video today is your plan B. I hope something I have said is your plan B for today. And that if you can redefine hope, not as a feeling, but as a plan B, that gives us permission to have today not work and tomorrow. I hope that as you think of hope 
in a new way, that you will see that you can be in the middle of a long battle. And there's going to be times where you're going to be the one that is the lifeline for someone else in the middle of their struggle. And we need you here for that alone. So I hope you're journaling. I hope you're capturing in journals when your plan B isn't working and you're on plan D or ideas that have worked for you. You know, I call it my big toolbox. So in my toolbox, I have things like massage. I have friends. I have coaches. I've had therapists. I have getting enough sleep. I have Christmas music. It, for, for some reason, Christmas music can always pull me out and into a better place. Those are just some of my plan B's. But my invitation to you is to keep wrestling, keep moving forward, keep adding to your toolbox because you never know when tomorrow you'll be the one that has that tool that your neighbor needs because their part of their life or their soul or their heart has broken and they've given up hope and they're tired and they're ready to be gone. You may be honest on social media. You may have a conversation with a friend or a family member. You may have a thought or of a name that comes into your mind right now of someone that needs this video. I hope that you will reach out to them and let them know that they matter, that you need them in this wrestle of life that we're all in the middle of. Thank you for joining me here on The Middle and, and thank you for sharing your comments and your support for this show. And we hope that you'll keep tuning back in as we unpack these complicated stories that we're all in the middle of. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you again next time.